In the vast expanse of our everyday interactions, the ability to genuinely connect with others stands as a profound testament to our human experience. This connection goes beyond mere conversation. It is an authentic bridge between souls where understanding and empathy flourish. To navigate this journey successfully, we must first understand the foundational elements that foster true connection. The initial step in connecting deeply with anyone in any situation involves cultivating a profound sense of presence. When we talk about presence, we are referring to the art of being completely in the moment, fully engaged with the person in front of us. This means setting aside our own agendas, distractions, and preoccupations to truly listen and understand the other person. Consider how often we find ourselves planning our next statement while the other person is still speaking. This common habit is a barrier to genuine engagement. To enhance our presence, we can practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is not merely a meditative practice, but a practical approach to everyday interactions. It involves noticing when our mind drifts and gently guiding it back to the present conversation. Here's a simple yet effective practice. Whenever you find yourself in a conversation, focus on the other person's words, their facial expressions, and the emotions they convey. This doesn't just show respect, it deepens your understanding of their perspective. Furthermore, presence allows us to pick up on subtle cues. These cues, be it a slight frown, a hesitant tone, or a quick smile, provide insights into the other person's emotional state. Responding to these cues appropriately can significantly enhance the connection. For instance, if someone hesitates while sharing a personal story, offering a gentle nod or a soft word of encouragement can provide them with the comfort they need to open up. Another aspect of connecting deeply is empathy. Empathy goes beyond simple sympathy. It involves stepping into another's shoes, understanding their feelings and perspectives as if they were your own. This does not mean you need to agree with everything they say, but it requires a genuine attempt to understand where they are coming from. Let's explore a practical exercise to develop empathy. The next time you are listening to someone, try to sense what they might be feeling. Then reflect that feeling back to them with a phrase like, it sounds like that was really challenging for you. Such reflections not only validate the other person's feelings, but also confirm that you are truly engaged in understanding their experience. Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lessons. In this context, it is vital to recognize the importance of non-judgmental listening. When we listen without judging, we create a safe space for others to express themselves fully. Judgment often stems from our own experiences and biases, which can cloud our ability to truly hear what the other person is conveying. To practice non-judgmental listening, start by observing your reactions during conversations. Are you quick to offer advice or to dismiss the other person's concerns? Instead, try to simply listen allowing the other person to be the expert on their own experience. This shift in approach can significantly deepen your interactions, fostering a stronger and more genuine connection. By now, you might be wondering how these practices can be maintained consistently, especially in challenging situations. It's one thing to be present and empathetic during a calm, pleasant conversation. But what about when we are under stress or when the conversation takes a difficult turn? This leads us to the concept of emotional resilience in communication. Emotional resilience refers to our ability to stay centered and maintain our composure, irrespective of the emotional dynamics of the interaction. This doesn't mean suppressing our feelings, but rather managing them in a way that allows us to remain present and empathetic. One way to build emotional resilience is, 
through regular reflection on our interactions. After a conversation, especially a challenging one, take a moment to reflect on how you handled it. Did you stay present? Were you empathetic? Did you listen without judgment? Reflecting on these questions can provide insights that will help you grow and maintain these practices even in difficult situations. Let me leave you with a question to reflect on before we proceed to the next part. How often do you find yourself truly present in your daily interactions and what might be keeping you from being fully there? The essence of authentic engagement, cultivating genuine connections. As we advance in our exploration of deep connection, we arrive at a pivotal element, authenticity. Authenticity is the cornerstone of trust and rapport, without which a true connection cannot exist. It's about being genuine in our words and deeds, allowing our true self to engage in interactions. The journey towards authenticity begins with self-awareness. Self-awareness involves understanding our own emotions, motivations, and values. It is about recognizing our strengths and our limitations, our biases, and our blind spots. This deep self-knowledge allows us to engage genuinely, without pretense or facade, which is essential for building trust. Consider the impact when someone senses that you are not being entirely honest or when you are trying to be someone you are not. It creates a barrier, a sense of distrust that can prevent deeper engagement. In contrast, when you interact from a place of true authenticity, people are more likely to feel comfortable opening up to you. To cultivate authenticity, begin by reflecting on your core values. What principles guide your life? Are your actions aligned with these values? When there is alignment between your values and your behavior, authenticity naturally flows. For instance, if one of your core values is compassion, reflect on how this value is expressed in your interactions. Are there moments when you could be more compassionate? Adjusting your behavior to more closely align with your values enhances your authenticity. Moreover, embracing vulnerability plays a crucial role in authenticity. Vulnerability is often misunderstood as a weakness, but in the realm of human connections, it is a strength. It involves the courage to express your thoughts and feelings openly, even when there is a risk of being judged or misunderstood. To practice vulnerability, start with small steps. Share something personal about yourself in a conversation, perhaps a challenge you faced or a lesson you learned. Notice how this act of openness can transform the interaction, encouraging others to lower their defenses and share more deeply as well. However, it's essential to balance vulnerability with discretion. Not every situation warrants complete openness, and not every detail needs to be shared. The key is to be genuine about your feelings and thoughts while considering the appropriateness of the disclosure given the context and the nature of the relationship. Authenticity also demands consistency. This means being the same you in various situations and with different people. It doesn't imply rigidity. Our responses might change based on context, but the underlying values and sincerity remain consistent. For instance, if you're known for being a supportive person, this trait should be evident whether you are at home, at work, or with friends. Now, let's consider the implications of authenticity in difficult conversations. When faced with conflict or disagreement, how can you maintain authenticity? It starts with honest expression and active listening. State your perspective clearly and respectfully, but also give space to hear the other side. This approach not only resolves conflicts more effectively, but also strengthens the connection through mutual respect. Finally, reflect on this question. In your daily life, are there moments when you find it challenging to be authentic? What might be influencing these moments, and how can you address them?
Harmonizing differences, mastering the art of adapting communication styles. As we delve deeper into our exploration of connecting with others, it becomes essential to understand and adapt to different communication styles. Each individual expresses and perceives information uniquely, shaped by their background, personality, and experiences. Recognizing and adjusting to these differences can dramatically enhance our ability to connect, fostering deeper understanding and cooperation. Understanding the basic types of communication styles is our starting point. Generally, people can be categorized into four main styles, assertive, aggressive, passive, and passive-aggressive. Assertive communicators express themselves openly and clearly, maintaining respect for others. Aggressive communicators often push their ideas forcefully, sometimes at the expense of others. Passive communicators tend to be quiet and avoid confrontation, while passive-aggressive communicators may express negativity indirectly. By identifying these styles in others, we can tailor our approach to better align with their communication needs and preferences. For example, when dealing with an assertive communicator, engaging in a direct and straightforward manner can be very effective. With aggressive communicators, it is crucial to maintain composure and not be drawn into conflict, using calm assertiveness to express your views. When interacting with passive communicators, encouraging them to open up by asking open-ended questions can be beneficial, and with passive-aggressive individuals, addressing the underlying issues directly and kindly can help clear misunderstandings. Adapting to these styles requires us to be flexible and empathetic. This does not mean compromising our authenticity, but rather extending our behavioral repertoire to accommodate different types of interactions. Think of it as being a chameleon, capable of adjusting your approach while staying true to your core values and intentions. Practicing this adaptation involves developing a keen sense of observation Pay attention to cues that might indicate someone's communication style. Do they prefer detailed discussions? Or are they more focused on the big picture? Do they respond better to data and facts or to stories and emotions? Adjusting your communication to suit these preferences can make your interactions more effective and harmonious. Additionally, Cultural sensitivity plays a pivotal role when adapting communication styles. Cultural background influences how people communicate and what they consider respectful or offensive. By educating ourselves about cultural differences and showing respect for these nuances, we not only avoid potential misunderstandings, but also enrich our own perspectives. To cultivate this skill, engage in active listening this involves more than just hearing words. It's about understanding the complete message being conveyed. Active listening also shows that you value the speaker's perspective, which can open doors to deeper connection. Another effective strategy is to mirror the other person's communication style. This doesn't mean mimicking them, but rather aligning with their pace, tone, and language level. Mirroring can create a subliminal sense of familiarity and comfort, making the other person feel more understood and connected. However, adapting to different communication styles requires practice and patience. It's a skill that develops over time through mindful observation, reflection, and adjustment. Each interaction provides a new learning opportunity helping us to refine our ability to connect with diverse individuals. Before we move to the final part of our exploration, reflect on the following. How often do you adjust your communication style based on the person you are interacting with? And what impact does it have on your interactions? The Symphony of Sustained Connection, Cultivating Enduring Relationships. In this final segment of our exploration into deep human connections, we focus on the enduring aspect of relationships. 
Building a connection is an initial step. Maintaining it over time, ensuring it remains meaningful and vibrant, is where the true art lies. This requires continuous effort, commitment, and a strategic approach to nurturing relationships. The cornerstone of sustaining any relationship is consistent communication. Regular interactions help keep the connection alive and demonstrate that you value the relationship. However, consistency should not be confused with monotony. It's about keeping the communication genuine and engaging, ensuring that each interaction adds value and warmth to the relationship. To illustrate, consider scheduling regular check-ins with friends or colleagues. These don't have to be lengthy or formal, but should serve as touch points that reinforce your mutual respect and interest. In professional contexts, this might look like regular feedback sessions or collaborative meetings. In personal relationships, it could be as simple as a weekly call to share updates or discuss common interests. Another vital aspect of maintaining relationships is adaptability. As individuals grow and evolve, so do their needs and perspectives. A relationship that remains static is likely to falter under the weight of change. Being adaptable involves being open to the evolving dynamics of the relationship and being willing to adjust your role and expectations accordingly. For example, a friend going through a major life transition, such as becoming a parent or changing careers, might have different emotional or time availability. Showing flexibility in how and when you interact and offering support that aligns with their current circumstances can significantly strengthen the relationship. Additionally, conflict resolution plays a critical role in sustained connections. No relationship is free of disagreements, but the durability of a relationship often depends on how conflicts are handled. Approaching disagreements with a mindset of finding a solution rather than winning an argument is crucial. This involves active listening, empathizing with the other person's viewpoint, and collaboratively finding a resolution that respects both parties' needs. To practice effective conflict resolution, start by expressing your feelings and concerns clearly and respectfully. Encourage the other person to do the same, and together, explore solutions that address both sets of needs. This approach not only resolves the immediate conflict, but also builds a foundation of trust and mutual respect that is essential for long-term relationships. Recognizing and celebrating milestones and achievements is another way to deepen connections. Acknowledging important events in each other's lives, whether personal triumphs or professional successes, can enhance the sense of shared joy and solidarity. This could be as simple as sending a congratulatory message, sharing in celebrations, or providing support during challenging times. Finally, the continual investment of time and emotional energy is indispensable. Relationships thrive on the nutrients of attention and care. It is the small gestures of kindness, the regular expressions of appreciation, and the shared moments of joy that weave the strong fabric of a lasting relationship. As we conclude this journey, reflect on the relationships in your life that you value deeply. Consider what actions you can take to strengthen these bonds. How can you apply the principles of sustained connection to ensure these relationships continue to grow and flourish? Are there any specific areas within this topic you would like to explore further or any questions you might have about deepening and maintaining your personal or professional relationships?